nothing above you. Nothing will go above you but the creator. That's what self-love does to you. And when you tap into the creator, what that does, is it kicks back down towards you a love for humanity, a respect for other human beings because you see God in them too now. You see God in yourself. You see God in her. You see God in him. You see God in them all. The only thing you're looking for now is if their actions reflect God consciousness. A lot of you may be familiar with the book, The Way of the Superior Man. The funny thing is, uh, I had that book and never read it, you know. I knew of it, but I never read it myself. And recently I seen a YouTube video talking about guys who will break down some of the key points he discussed in the book. And I found it funny or fascinating that a lot of the stuff he said is what I teach men myself, because it works. One of the things I do teach is a sort of purpose over women, but not in those words. Let me tell you first why that's wrong, the words of it wrong. I know I put that in the title, I know I got that on the, on the thumbnail, but it's not purpose over women, it's God over women. Let me explain this. A human being really has no purpose. Purpose is something that we cling to, it's a social construct. We cling to it based on society itself. But in reality, we have no purpose. You have passions. So it could have been passions over women, right? Or pursuits. Well, I don't want to say pursuits. Passions over women. We have passions. For instance, a man might be inclined to build things, to create things. He should not let any woman stifle that. If he has a natural inclination towards, you know, mechanical engineering, then he should utilize that and go out and make society better by contributing in a way uh, that, that like, like building things, right? He should make society better by building things that society needs. So you should, you should not put a woman above your passions, right? One of a man's passion should be some form of spirituality, some form of spiritual base, some form of grounding. You know what I'm saying? That should be one of the things that you should be passionate about. Again, I don't want to call it a pursuit because then it becomes more of an ambition. I don't want to do that. I want to call it a passion because passions are things that, that you like to do that give you pleasure in doing. Ambitions don't necessarily give you pleasures in the pursuit of, of the ambition. Pursuits, but all pursuits are hard. A pursuit is tiresome. A pursuit takes energy, takes time. When you are engaged in a passion, you never feel like you're working, right? You never feel like you're wasting time because it's a passion, you know what I'm saying? So it's different, it's not, a, it's not an ambition, it's not a pursuit, it's a passion. But passions should be in line with, 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 with a sort of uh, uh, peace and serenity that you get from a spiritual connection, right? From understanding a higher force, a higher power, for understanding a higher self. No one should come before your higher self. You should, you should want to tap into that and build that up and, and, and increase that as much as you can. And regardless of the relationship with anybody else on the outside, be it another man or woman, I'm not talking about homosexuality, I'm just talking about friends, uh, relationships, it don't matter. Your higher self comes first, right? Investing in yourself comes first. So you need to have that relationship with yourself. And I said that in another video, that your first relationship is with yourself. And if the first relationship with yourself includes your connection to the higher force, connection to your creator, connection to God, whatever you want to call your creator, if, if that relationship to yourself, because the God reside in you, so having that first relationship with self is having that first relationship with God. So if that if that relationship is first, then a woman automatically comes second. So this is not putting a woman down. This is not stepping over her. This is not, you know, um, dismissing her in any kind of way. This is just understanding that 
Your first relationship is with yourself. But here's the kicker though, brothers. Her first relationship is also with herself. Her first relationship is also with God. See, the difference is I taught in my family that, I, that for all of us, the thing that's gonna hold us together is our connection to the Creator. Because if you put your faith in man, a woman in her case, put your faith in a man in her case, a woman in my case, you're gonna be disappointed. Ask my wife, this is what I actually taught my women, right? That you can't put total faith in me. I am a human being. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna have mishaps. I'm gonna have missteps. I'm gonna have miscalculations, right? I'm gonna do all of these things. So what you can't do is you can't make me into some type of perfect being that will never get it wrong because you're gonna you're gonna be disappointed. So your first relationship and connection needs to be with yourself and your creator. And then I'm second. So if we both connect to the creator, then by connecting to the creator, we are both connecting to our innate natures because now we're tapping into the universal laws that our creator created us under. And that's when you start getting femininity and masculinity. The, 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 the different characteristics of the genders is something that is innate, is given to us from the creator. So if your first relationship as a woman is with yourself and the creator, then you're going to be more feminine and you're going to love it. If your first relationship as a man is with yourself and the creator, then you're going to be more masculine and you're going to love it. You're not going to want to pretend masculinity while you really want to be around here in the system. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't claim that you're a real alpha man when all you're trying to do is be a man under the confines and under the definition of this system, of, of the matrix. Because a real man would oppose the matrix. So you're not a man because remember, your first relationship is with yourself and the creator. The creator in you should not want to be a slave to not even this system. So if you think that this system is what defines you as a man, you're not a man. You're not a man because you don't have a relationship with yourself. If you love yourself, you can't love this system also. If you love yourself, you can't put nobody above you. Nothing above you. Nothing will go above you but the creator. That's what self-love does to you. And when you tap into the creator, what that does, it kicks back down towards you a love for humanity, a respect for other human beings because you see God in them too now. You see God in yourself. You see God in her. You see God in him. You see God in them all. The only thing you're looking for now is if their actions reflect God consciousness. If their actions move like they're walking in God body. This is why it's called God body. You're not walking in God body if you are advocating on behalf of this system. You're not walking in God body if you think that you're supposed to own and control a woman. If you think that you're supposed to mold her into something that you like. She is not supposed to be what you like. She's supposed to be what she likes. But if she's tapped into her proper self, in her true self, it's going to kick back down to her a understanding that we are different. And when she sees the differences that a man brings to the table, instead of that bothering her, instead of she feeling like she need to try to change you, instead of she feeling like she need to try to control you, she's going to actually feel proud that you carry that much alpha in you, that you carry that much man in you. She's going to love it. She's going to love it because she's going to see God in you. So I would not have said purpose over women. It's really passion over women. And that will include all passions and inclinations, including your, 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 you should have a desire to tap into God. Your first relationship should be with yourself. First of all, first of all, with yourself and the creator, that's your first relationship. So I wouldn't have, I just wouldn't have said passion, I mean um purpose over over women because we have no purpose. That's a part of the system. The system gives you purpose. Allah gives you life. I'm gonna say that again. The system gives you purpose. Allah gives you life. Passions give you direction. Passions determine what you're gonna bring to the table as a human being, as far as society goes. Because passion should not, you know, you should have no passions that you hold in. Take, I'm gonna give you an example. Take your musician. 
all musicians want to do when they get good at playing music is entertain. That's their passion. They don't want to learn to play music for themselves. When I played them instruments, all I wanted to do was blow, was get on my trumpet, you know, and get in that parade and step. Hit St. Charles Street, hit Canal Street, knees all the way up, blowing my ass off, stepping, you know what I'm saying? That's all I wanted to do. I wanted people to hear me playing. I marched on the end, so when I come up toward in that hall, I wanted people to see me, you know, doing my thing. The plumes on our on our uniforms, you know, you know, most of the uniforms for bands are like military type style uniforms. So I wanted people to see me clean and decked out. The reason why I switched instruments so I could be in a concert band. Trumpets are loud instruments. A lot of times you won't see trumpets played in concerts, right? In a, in a concert band, a concert band is very small, and trumpets are very loud. So a lot of times, either you have a mute with the trumpet or you gotta play something like a French horn. Something that's a little more mellow, but has the same kind of range pitch. So I learned how to play the French horn because I wanted to be in the concert band. I wanted to be in that band. I had solos. I mean, it's, it's lovely to stand up and you do your solo in front of audience of people, you know what I'm saying? This is a passion. So all passions are supposed to be shared. Understand that. All passions are supposed to be shared, but your relationship, your first personal relationship is with yourself and with yourself comes your connection to the creator. And from there, you branch out everything else because it kicks back down to you a certain understanding, a certain fundamental understanding and appreciation for humanity. That's what it looks like when somebody's walking in God body. When somebody's walking in God body, you can tell because they look at this world and they get sick. When they when they walk in the God body, they don't think they they they're supposed to own another human being. They understand that all human beings have a right to be where they are. That if a woman you care about and love decides tomorrow, baby, I want to go a different way. You are supposed to hug her, give her a kiss on the cheek, and say, "Good luck, baby." I wish you well, you know. If you ever need anything that I can help you with, you know where I'm at. Go walk your walk. Life is short. See, this is my take on the whole Tia Maori thing, you know. This is about y'all don't hear what I got to say. She was right. She articulated what she was going through. Y'all think women don't have midlife crises also. They crises also, but they do have midlife crisis. You know what I'm saying? And she's hit one. She's realizing she's getting old. She's realizing that she don't really do nothing for herself Nothing that makes her, you know, go. She, she, her, she, she realized that she put somebody else before her relationship with self, and she's come out of that stage and realized I have to put myself first. And what Corey was supposed to do was hug her and say, "Baby, I'm not gonna hold you back. Put yourself first. You can do that inside the marriage." But she realized she couldn't do that inside inside of that marriage, so she left. But with me, she could have did it inside the marriage. Now, unless she just wanted to do something that was totally against anything I stand for, you know, then I'd have just hugged her, kissed on the cheek, said, good luck, boo, I wish you well. And I'd let her go. Because when you're walking in God's body, you understand that that's what you're supposed to do with somebody you care about and love. You want to see them walk their own path. You want, them, you want to see them do that. I want to say pursue their own happiness, but again, I hate that word pursue. Because a pursuit is hard. A pursuit is tiresome. That's why they put that in our um, in, in, in the preamble to the declaration, you know what I'm saying? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Because you may not get happy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you're chasing it, right? You have a right to go after it, but you may not get it. But you sacrifice so much in a pursuit. With a passion, you don't have to sacrifice anything. Pursuit, you're going to sacrifice a lot. With a passion, you don't really sacrifice anything because your passion gives you pleasure. It makes you a better person. A pursuit makes you a, 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 a give you my, myopia, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it makes you harden. It, it, it makes you, you know, single-minded and single-focused, right? That's a pursuit. A passion don't make it like that. A passion just relaxes you. You know, a passion, you engage in your passion, when you come back, you just as pleasant and peaceful, you know what I'm saying? Pursuits make you tired, you got no energy. Passions, you full of energy. You could have you could have been working on your passion all day and still come home and have sex for three hours. You know what I'm saying? Because passions don't take nothing from you. It gives to you. Especially once you conclude it and you're actually able to start sharing that passion with society, it really gives to you. So these things are different. So um 
the way of the superior man, I wouldn't have said, you know, uh, uh, um, for purpose over women, but definitely, definitely self. I self, Lord Master, self is your first relationship. Put yourself first. That's that's a definite. Put yourself and your creator first. And you tell that woman to do the same. Don't be afraid. Because if she taps into, like I said, she taps into her creator, it's going to kick back down to her a better understanding of humanity. She's going to respect you as a man more if she do that. Y'all want the woman to focus on you. No. Get her to focus on the creator. Get her to focus on herself. She needs to be with you for her. She needs to be what she wants to be. Not what she needs to be. What she wants to be. You don't want her to need you. You need her to want you. Oh, I, look, you're not gonna get this teacher nowhere else. You're not gonna get this teaching nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? Because this is real teaching from real experience. So you think about that. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Till next time, I'm out of here. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Alpha, and this was Philosophical Friday. Shalom.